Hi everyone, this is Mike McDonald, interim pastor at Forest City Baptist Church in the beautiful city of London, Ontario. And I just, I am so excited to be able to present our morning service for you. And I hope that God blesses you and you have a great week as you serve him. going to be looking again at the mission, vision, and values of 2022 and beyond for our church. We have to be, we have to know where we're going. We need to be centered and, and, and mission, vision, and values are used by almost any organization to keep them on course. Otherwise, there's so many things we can do in this world, isn't there? I mean, the, the, I mean you, you can take this church, you can take any organization, you can do almost anything you want and head in any direction, but is it the right direction? Is it the most profitable direction? Is it the useful direction that we're supposed to be doing? So the mission, vision, and values for Forest City Baptist Church, they're easy to find because they're all right here in the Great Commission in Matthew 28. And we're going to look at that, and they're located in these three verses. So if we go to the, the next slide there, you'll see, and that's, that's where I'm talking about the sandwich. So well, let's, let's read this, and we'll look at, at that. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, 
I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you again for this opportunity. We thank you for the opportunity to be in your house. We thank you for the health and the strength to get here. We thank you for the daily provisions that you've given us. We need to be a thankful people. We're, we're thankful, most important of all, for Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior of the universe, who would stoop down to this world and would save lowly people like ourselves in need of salvation. But, Father, there are more. There are others out there in this world, and they are out there in the, in the fields of sin. And they do need a shepherd. They need Jesus Christ in their lives. Help us to be the, the, the feet and the hands of Jesus Christ as the church is supposed to be to this world. And Father, we have friends and we have lost loved ones and we have people that need to hear about Jesus' message. May they see it in our lives and hear it from us as well. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we're looking here, and in this sermon, we will, we're will we going to review a little bit of the mission and the vision of the church. And man, it's an awesome one. And uh, we'll see that, the, that, that Jesus has given us uh, the, this, uh, this amazing set of values. And we're going to look at the value statement as well. So the mission, the vision, and now we're going to look at the values today of this. And uh, I want you to see that they're also found in the Great Commission. The value statement. What's the value statement? As I said, most organizations, they have a, a mission, something that they're going to do. They have a vision, something that they, they see themselves doing in the future. And they have values. In other words, these core values that, that, that uh, are, are very useful um, because what they, what they do is the co va core values, they define what the organization believes in and how people in the organization are expected to behave and make decisions. So if we have the right godly values as given in the Great Commission. The Great Values, that means every time we add a new ministry to this church, it'll have to align with the values that God has given us. Every time we do something in our own personal lives, we always check with God's Word. Is this in alignment with your values, Lord? Am I doing what you want me to do? And, and, and so making decisions and behavior, we need to keep it in, in with the values that God has given us. And again, the corporate world, they have values too. Uh, I looked at some, Hilton, you know, the, the hospital, or hospital, the hospitality chain, uh, Hilton Brands. Here's, here's their, their, uh, their values that they live by, or they want their people to live by. Hospitality, integrity, leadership, teamwork, ownership, now. That last word, no, that's our last value. That means it's urgent. We need, to urgently, we need to urgently be hospitable, have integrity, have leadership, teamwork, and ownership. We must do this now. And that's their values. Okay, so that's what they've set up. And then when an organization does that, they've got to be careful because then everybody judges them according to their values. When we, we're going to look in a minute at our values, and we're going to have to see if God's keeping us to those values. Uh, another uh, company, uh, which, was a soft, which is a software company called Hop, uh, HubSpot, and there's this, uh, it's an acronym that spells out uh, HEART. Here's, here's what their values are. They stand for humble, empathetic, adaptable, remarkable, transparent. And again, they use it so the H-E-A-R-T uh, spells HEART. And once again, uh, the question goes out to us, okay? You have a mission. The mission is to go and teach, make disciples. You have a vision. The vision is to see results from that, to see people baptized and added to the local church. All right? So what is it that's going to, what, what, what should we be like? What type of people should we be like to see that done? And, and uh, I want to show you that. If we go to the next slide, in Matthew 28, verse 20, Here's something that I want you to see that's really, really, really important. People will discount this. Be careful you don't discount this. The values that we need to have in a local church, we need to have at Forest City Baptist Church, is as it says there, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. That is our value statement according to God. Christ Church. And I use the acronym TAD, T-A-D. We need to have a little bit of a, a TAD there. We'll understand what it, what it means. And, and um, I mean, I can't wait to share this with you. So the first thing is, if we go to the next slide there, here's the first thing he says. Here's, our, here, here's a, uh, a value that we must uh, embrace and love and cherish as, as a member here at Forest City Baptist Church, and that is to teach. 
We need to be a tr teaching church. Teaching. Teaching is the method for sharing Christ's values. That's, that's what Jesus did. He was the great teacher. They would say, Master. What does that mean? Or Rabbi. Or Rabboni. It means teacher, master, leader. To teach us something. People were hungry for the Word. As much as people wanted to be healed and everything else, they wanted to hear from Him. Teach us. Teach us to pray. Teach us about, you know, uh, is this when the, you're going to set up your new kingdom? Is this, teach us something, Lord. Teach us. And it, it is so important. The followers of Jesus Christ must be both learners and teachers. The church as a whole must be a center for learning. Whereas universities are centers for learning man's philosophy, churches are to be centers of learning God's theology through His Word. We need to be smart people in God's Word. I don't care if you, if you know how to split it in them, but I do care if you know how to live for Jesus Christ and how to live victoriously and how to overcome sins in your life and how to share your faith with other people. That takes teaching. It takes a, a learning spirit. So not only do we have to get to the point where we're masters and teachers, but we have to have we'll always be learning. I love it when I'm learning all the time. I've told you this probably before, but I'm in a doctor's program. I'm, looking for my, I'm working on my doctor of theology. I'll probably get it in the next 20 years. Uh, I mean, I, I made the mistake. I paid for everything up front. Now I just got to do it, okay? And it's, it's like uh, with all the things I have to do in my life, I, I, I get shortchanged there. But I love and I cherish the moments where I can learn the Word of God from other people. And sometimes I learn things that I, I've overlooked, and it's just like, whoo, the light comes on. And it's like, it, my life is, is fresh and alive. And I have that relationship with God. We should have, our church should be like that. People should come with anticipation saying, what, what am I going to learn today? What's coming out there today? What we shouldn't be doing is the same old, same old stale stuff. And it's not because we're trying to, to entertain people. It's because it's a value that God has set for us. He said teaching, okay, teaching them. And it's very important. So, so one of the reasons the typical church has fallen behind in its influence of society is due to a lack of teaching. It really is. Uh, some churches are ensnared in social causes, and which, are, which are good social causes, but what happens is it leads to a shortage of time for teaching its members sound Bible doctrine and principles. People don't grow. They're so busy doing something that they don't teach. They don't grow as a, as a person. And I'll tell you something, this will happen to you. If you're not growing in the Word of God, if I'm not teaching and others aren't teaching, and if you don't become a teacher yourself, and if we don't all have that learning spirit about us, what will happen as you give and you give and you give and you get so involved in ministry, you get burned out. You will wear yourself thin. You will lose that, 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 that excitement, and that, that connection to the Almighty God. And things will become mundane for you and boring. And then you'll, you'll try to seek the world. What, what, what kind of mission can I do? And you'll look to the world for it. It's right there in the Word of God. Every Sunday you should learn something. Every Sunday when I'm preparing messages, I learn something. I don't always convey it the way I should, but, but, but I do. And it excites me and it, it sparks my, my life for this. So, so teaching is so important. It's a value that we must have. And some churches uh, have now become theaters of entertainment, which replaces the importance of teaching its members Bible doctrine and principles. And some churches uh, have pastors who are either unwilling or incapable of teaching. And they might be good leaders and stuff, but if they, we're going to see this in a minute, they need to be able to teach. Otherwise, the people won't grow. I don't care how great our activities are. If we're not growing, if we're not learning, if there's no spark in life to us, we'll fizzle out. That's just a nat natural way of gravitation for us. A few months ago, I watched a pastor preach a sermon on what it was to be manly. You know, I, I go on YouTube every once in a while. I see what the other preachers are preaching. I went on this, this guy was preaching on that. And he spent at least five minutes comparing North American football players to soccer players from Europe. And uh, th this is what he was doing. And he said that soccer players call their sport football when, in fact, real football involves real men wearing padding and clashing with the opposing side. And he's going on about this for five minutes. And, and, and I'll tell you this much. He, and he was also referring to the, the soccer players as sissies. They're not real men. They're soccer players. And uh, they're not real football players either. 
From the pastor's appearance, I doubt that he could last 30 seconds against those sissies. So I'm looking at that, and my point is this. It's not uncommon for a preacher to get so involved with other things and other ideas and try to twist the church to, to go to what he views of something that if he gets away from the Word of God and he gets away from the teaching of God, he takes the church and gets it in twisted, mangled up conditions, heading in wrong directions. And I doubt very much that the, that pastor's definition of manly is the same as Jesus' definition of manly. It has nothing to do with sports, by the way, being a real man. But that's, that if I, I just went by that ma message, uh, that's what I would have got. So the, the first value we must commit to as a church is that of teaching the pure Word of God. It's a must. It's a value. What do you do at Forest City Baptist Church? Man, we learned the Word of God. Oh, yeah, but what else? No, that's the first value right there. Well, why would you do that? Because Jesus said, after you've gone and you got out there and you got people saved and they got baptized, you get them in the church, what's the first thing you got to do with them now that they're in church? Oh, you just leave them alone? No, no. Now it just starts. Now you start your teaching. Now you're really getting into it. Now you're not just making disciples. Now you're not just bringing them to the cross. They've already been to the cross. Now what? And I've seen so many churches where people get saved and it's like, that, that was it. I got saved. And every time you talk to them about, how's your Christian life going? What's going on in your life? What's going on in your church? Hey, I got saved. Yeah, I know that. You got saved 20 years ago. What's been going on since? Well, I got saved. Listen, that's just the new birth. When a baby's born into the world, what do you do? Just leave them alone? A lot of places do. Hey, hey. Spiritually speaking, leave him alone. What happens when you leave a baby alone? Well, if the baby doesn't die, he grows up on the streets and he adopts other friends and other ways of life. When we get a new person saved and into the baptistry tank, we are committed. Do you understand that the value? This is a value. We are now committed. That's a new birth. That's a new life. And that's where the work really takes off. That's why it's a value. Now we have to teach this person what to do. And these people are going to come in. Some are not going to have too many problems. Some people are going to be really messed up. All right? But God saved them. He's brought them to us. We need to teach them. We need to get that baby growing. And when that baby's growing, then we need to teach them to be teachers to others. See, don't waste it. Now, I know there's some people who will never get to that point where they're teachers. They just have different issues. Maybe it's, maybe it's a mental uh, ability or whatever it is. Okay? Maybe it's an addiction. Maybe, but we always got to be working with people. As long as they're willing, we have to be willing. If they're willing to, to receive, we got to be willing to teach and give it up. Do you understand how important you are and why you can't just sit there in a the pew and do nothing? Why you need to be active in people? And some people can't just uh, maybe do, do the doctrine, but I'll tell you something, you need to be praying for those people. This is, this is, we're brought a new life into the world, into the world of Christianity. We can't leave them, or else they will grow up on the streets, and they'll get messed up, and they'll waste their life away. Don't let that happen. That's a value we must, we must have. Now, to support this, let's look at the qualifications of a pastor. You got your Bibles? First Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 3. I want, to, I want to support something here. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, you will find the qualification of pastors. Okay? And it, it's used interchangeable. The word pastor, bishop, elder are used interchangeable in the, in the Word of God. And at another time, I could teach you that as well, if you, if you don't have that grasped yet. But let's look at the qualifications of a pastor. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, you see, he has to have a desire. If he desires the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. Now, here it is. Here's the, the qualifications. And man, I'll tell you, I'm looking at them. They're doozies. A bishop must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule the, his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest he, being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil, Moreover, he must have a good report of them 
which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. You see, the devil keeps messing up around there. The devil goes after leaders, so we need to make sure we get the right ones. But I want you to look back there, and I want you to, uh, uh, as you review the qualifications of, of, this, uh, of this, this preacher, this pastor, you will find that they all involve his personality and character. He has to be a person of uh, uh, a sound personality and, and a very good, high moral character, with the exception of one thing. There's one area there, when you look at it here, uh, it, it's, there, there's just one qualification, and it's buried in the mix, and it ha has nothing to do, it, not, not so much with the personality and the character, but it involves three tiny words, and that, those three tiny words are apt to teach. Teaching is the only qualification that requires the pastor to have a spiritual gift. The pastor has to be able to teach. Has to. Has to. It's a qualification. So if the pastor is not blameless, uh, he is not qualified. If the pastor cannot teach, likewise, he is not qualified. And you say, well, what's that all about? Well, it all goes back to the Great Commission. Go ye therefore, now notice this, and, and, and uh, you can go back to, to Matthew chapter 28 again, but Matthew chapter 28, verse, uh, verse 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. There's teaching. Pastors got to be able to teach the gospel, okay? And it, baptizing them. And then in verse 20, teaching them to observe, okay? Teaching, it's teaching. There's two things, there's two things in the Great Commission that, that, that pop up, and it's teaching, teaching, teaching. So what's the qualification of the pastor? He's got to be apt to teach. He has to have the skill sets. He has to have that ability to convey truth to other people. He's got to be able to teach. It's so important. It's ingrained in there. So the church, as, as, as a value, we have to be a learning center. We have to learn. We have to grow. We have to, and it requires teaching. But that's for the pastor. But there's other people that teach too. We need Sunday school teachers to teach. We need we need elderly. Uh, uh, I guess I would say not elderly because it has nothing to do with age, but mature Christianity. People who've been around for a few years to teach the younger ones, to encourage them, to get them in the right direction. That's all teaching, 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 teaching. How do I deal with this? I have a problem with with my spouse. Teach them. Okay, I have this problem with my life. Teach them. Work takes patience, all that stuff. Teaching. And, and so our mission, our vision, our values are all there in the Great Commission and, I, and all in, dependent upon teaching the Word. And by the way, I'm going to throw this in for free, okay? I'm going to give you a little tidbit for free today. Now I want you to take, tell everybody that you, you get some free, free stuff here at church too. I'm going to give you a free thing, is, and that is, um, do you see the, qualifi the qualification... Or, or do you remember the qualification that is given just before apt to teach? Before he says apt to teach, and had that long list of things, he said the, the qualification is given to hospitality. And I'm going to link the two together. And I'm going to link them to our mission, vision, values. I'm going to link them to the Great Commission. Why has he got to be apt to teach? And just before that, why does he have to be given to hospitality? Here's the in interesting thing about that word, hospitality. Sometimes we limit it, Okay. To, well, the pastor has to be able to entertain people. Well, I guess to a degree. But you're not getting the fullness of it. That, that, that uh, given the hospitality comes from two, uh, one word actually, one Greek word that has two Greek uh, words attached together in one. And it mean, the first one is where we get brotherly love from, okay? So, and then the second Greek word that comes there is stranger or foreigner. Okay, xenos, like if somebody says, I'm a xenophobe. Or that guy is a xenophobe. That means he's afraid of foreigners. Okay, this is saying we're, the pastor has to be the opposite of that. He has to be okay. He has to be given to hospitality. In other words, he has that brotherly love to strangers. He has to be a person who can build connections to people who are not like himself, people who are strange personally to him. Whether it be their na nationality, whether it be the way they live, maybe it's their income, something about it. Maybe, maybe it's their hobbies, maybe things are... He's got to be able to learn how to build bridges, how to get through to people. Why? Because if you cannot, if you're not given the hospitality, if you don't care enough to, to get to know people and to try to reach up beyond your own borders, then you don't have anything to teach. All right? Nobody's going to listen to you if you're not making a connection. So pastor has to do that. But that's for the church as a whole as well. We have to be a church that connects to its community. We can't shut ourselves off and say, we're looking for this type of person. 
And some churches do that. They, they'll, they'll, have, they'll, they'll have, this is the type of person. And, and that's one of the, the, the shortcomings. And I, I like the, some of the things that, that I, I've got out of purpose-driven churches and stuff like that and seeker-sensitive churches and, and things. But the problem is, what they do is they do a marketing campaign where they find out who the people are in that area and they just market to that person. They try to get the gospel to that person. And, but, that, but you see, again, that's not the Great Commission. He said all nations... Forget about trying to find out who your target got. Your target is everybody, everywhere, all the time. And that means we have to be able to be given to hospitality. We need to have brotherly love to strangers. And that can be difficult. So that, and then, and then, apt to teach. So I look at this, and I'm like, there's no mistake here what God's trying to teach us here. So, and you can't reach all nations if you're not given the hospitality. You're closed. So it goes hand in hand. So the church has to be able to teach all nations. It's got to be a core. So that's, that's number one. Teach. What about the A in TAD? As I said, I got an acronym to, to try to remind myself what our values are. If you go to the next slide, the next thing we need to be is alert. Okay? We need, we need to be an alert church, a wake-up church. And uh, this is something we have to work on here, but it's a core value. We cannot go and teach if we are not alert. Now, notice that Jesus, and I want you to go right there and, and look there in, in, uh, in Matthew chapter 28. I want you to look there where it says we have to uh, te- teach, uh, teaching them. It says, all right, let's, first of all, let's see what it doesn't say there. It doesn't say teaching them all things, does it? If you've got the Great Commission open there in Matthew chapter 28, it says, after we baptize them, it, doesn't say, it does not say teaching them all things. Rather, Jesus says teaching them to observe all things. So the mission of this church, or I guess the value core, core value of this church, is not just to teach, but we're to teach you to observe. All right? We've got to teach you to wake up and observe. Take note of what the Scripture's saying. Look at the little words. Look at how they're working together. And I know, I know, I don't want, you don't have to learn Greek and Hebrew and stuff. I throw stuff like that in because it just gives a fuller meaning. But I want you to wake up. And I need to wake up. And I need to become more observant. Because sometimes we just fall asleep and we go through the same old, same old. Sometimes we quote Scripture so much we forgot what it means. Sometimes we sing the old hymns so much we forgot what they mean. It is, we just know how it goes. We've got to be careful. We get into that same old, same old. Now, if you didn't notice that before, but the job of the church is not to teach them all things, but to observe all things. And if you didn't know that before, it's because you weren't alert, okay? You weren't observing. So we need to observe this. That my job is not, and, th- and this is, uh, I, I guess this is where I'm going to try to, to get you to in, in a minute. And that is, there was a time um, when I had a, an ability to, or I was given an opportunity to uh, be a principal of a Christian school. And I was horrible at it because I, I'm not a good principal kind of guy. I let the kids do whatever they want. And there's snow out there. We can learn math or we can jump in the snowbank. What do you want to do? I'm the worst guy you want to have as a principal. I'll mess it up. So anyway, what, the year that I started was the year that we switched. And we switched from having live teachers to online. So this online learning, if you're having problems with it because of COVID, we did this, and this was about eight years ago when I was, when I was in this school. And we, because we're try, we had a problem with costs and everything else, we're trying to keep the costs and stuff. And so what we did is we had uh, a backup from Pensacola Christian College down in Florida. They would live stream. And so we, we, we purchased a whole bunch of computers, okay, for these kids. And they're all in front of workstations, and they had, they had all the workstations, and they had the live feed. So these, the teachers were actually more professional, I guess, in a way, uh, than the teachers we used to have, the live ones, because these, that's what they did for a living. They were solely dedicated to that. And we had some good teachers, so I, I don't want to dis- discount that at all. But these were really good teachers, and so they would be live streaming different subjects, from Bible to math to science to English, for all different levels, different, different ages. And so for the lower grades, we still had live teachers, but for the grades from 7 to 12, we had live stream computer teaching. Okay, as the day went on, I went in, 
I'd, and they're all st- sitting there in front of their monitors. They're watching, you know, the lessons. And I would go like this in front of them. And you know what happened? Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Because I was going like this, and they're like, either they were asleep, or by this time, they were in a trance. But the, the, I, I, the lights were on, but there was nobody home. Now, when people say, I don't believe in zombies, I could introduce you to a few. You just put them in front of a screen, and this is what happens after a while. And the same thing is true with online ministries. There's nothing wrong with them because they reach people who can't be reached for whatever reason, because of distance or maybe they can't get out. And so there's, I mean, that's awesome. But it'll never replace a live service because of the A in TAD. We're going to teach, but they have to be alert. So I have to know, and I, I, I see some people, and I notice people in other churches too, they would be working uh, a night shift, they'll come in, and they'll be, you know, sleeping. And I, I understand that, I get that. And I understand that I'm not the most exciting and vibrant person because I, I can't do a handstand or cartwheels. So I, I, I'm kind of limited in, in what I'm going to do to keep you guys a, 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 awake. But I do know this, I get to see who's paying attention and who's not. And I get an opportunity, if I see that I'm getting down... Wake you up a little bit. You can't do that on, online. Now, praise God, we have a service that's, that's probably just getting over with. If people could not make it out uh, today, we have on our YouTube channel, we have a service that's running simultaneously to this. But, and I do things on that. I, I've, I've done some edits to try to keep people's attention. But let me guarantee you this. There's no replacement to live interaction. Jesus knew that too. I mean, again, that, why were people following him around? They didn't want to get it secondhand from his disciples. They wanted it from the master. They were following him around because there was a live interaction. So th- th- this is what I'm alert, being alert, being alert all the time. So that, that was it. So, so the key, the, here is, here's what I found out. The key is not bringing the subject to the student. The key is bringing the student to the subject. Okay, I'll say that again because it's so profound. The key is not bringing the subject to the student. That's what you get when you're just getting online stuff. The key is bringing the student to the subject, getting them engaged, alert, wake up, see something you never saw before, learn something, see something that you can apply in your life, something that's meaningful. The Christian life is a meaningful life. And I praise God for Bible-believing churches. I mean, we have all, even in London, we have many uh, Bible-believing churches that, that preach the Word of God, and I praise God for that. But there's so many other churches that are, are so caught up in, in chants and hymns and hums and, and, and everything. Else. Nobody's learning anything. They're just going through motions. But we can even do that as Bible-believing churches. We can get into a rut. We need to expand ourselves and keep it alive. And then finally, the D. The D in our, our values. We're to be teaching church. We're to be an alert church. We're to be a church of doctrine. He says there, whatsoever. So teaching them to observe. So i got to get you not just to teach things, but i get you to observe things. What things? All things whatsoever I have commanded you. All things whatsoever I have commanded you. And uh, I'll tell you something. A lot of people, and I'll skip over this because of the time. i, I got so much more I could add to this sermon. But I, I know doctrine is so important. Some people f- think that theology is boring. It is not boring. It will change your life. It will help you deal with situations. It'll help you deal with, with current events. It'll help you in so many ways. But you need to get in and dig and learn what the Word of God is. I don't care what our, our forefathers said. I really don't care too much. What I care about, because they're dead. Our forefathers are dead. One day I'm going to be dead. So whatever Mike McDonald said, it doesn't matter a whole lot because I'll be dead. What matters is something that's going to be alive in every single generation. So my, I'm, a, I'm just passing on a torch to other people. I've got to teach you, and I gotta, you've got to teach the other generations so that when they go, when, when I'm gone from the scene and other people are gone from the scene, they'll be able to pick up this book because it's living, and they'll be able to teach doctrine from it. And they won't have to go to psychology, and they won't have to go to the philosophies of this world, and they won't seek their meaning from life from a university. By the way, you go to university, I've been to university. You go to university, they've got nothing for you. In that respect, okay? They could teach you some great ways of looking at things in a different angle. They can teach you some jobs if you want to be a, a dentist or a doctor or a lawyer. They got some great value. So I'm not devaluating them that way. But I'm saying if they're going to give you, they can't give you the meaning of life. They can't. Only Christ's church 
can show to its people the true meaning of life, the value of life. They can't give you the value of life. You know what I find universities do? They ask questions. But they leave you that way. There's no answers. This is one continuous question leading into another question. Next thing you know, all things are relative. Why? Because there's no answers. You could do anything. I mean, you, that's why, I mean, abortion's rampant. You think about all these sins. You can choose your gender. You can get yourself physically changed. You can alter everything. Why? Because there's no answer for them. There's just more questions. And then as technology comes along and prosperity comes along, we have more money to dabble into those things. And so now we're in so many weird things. Why? Because we can. But there's no answers, no meaning for life. But you check with those people. Go to people in your university. What's your purpose? Well, my purpose is to get an education. Why do I want to get an, or why do you want an education? Because I want to get a good job. Why do you want to get a good job? Oh, so I can buy things. And I can eventually save up enough to have a good retirement. Why do you want to have a good retirement? Well, so I can live on it till I die. That's it. You are a hamster, my friend, on a wheel. The wheel of life going around and around and around from birth to death. And that's all they can offer you. And you're going to try everything in between to give you some kind of sense of purpose and meaning and reason for living. they got all kinds of weird things you can try. But you're trying them because you have not met the one who has all the answers, who has the purpose and the value for you and your, you and your individual life. So us as a group, yeah, but let's be specific now. There is so much doctrine in here, so much teaching. Doctrine is really Bible teaching. That's what I'm talking for. Content, Bible teaching. There is so much in here, and this is some of the stuff we're even covering today. So much in here to keep us on track, to give us purpose and meaning. I don't care what the government thinks of this local church. Could care less. I don't care what our prime minister thinks. I don't care what our premier thinks. I care about what Jesus Christ thinks. And Jesus said, you're important. I don't care. They can pass the laws. They do whatever they want. They can make us a charitable organization, take us out of a charitable I don't care because I have a purpose and I have a meaning and I have value. I have real value and so do you. And, the, and this local church has value. And we are important because this world has no truth other than from what a local church can give it through the Word of God. No truth. You're not going to get it in universities. You're not going to get on some 30-minute game show or whatever else you're watching out there. Some reality show. Gobbledygoo. People going nowhere, just destroying their lives. Feeling guilty in the end. So much more. We have been given. If we go to the next slide, please. And I'll just conclude with this. In the Great Commission, it is great and it is a commission. He's authorized us. We have authority. That's why I said I don't care what the government says, because we answer to a higher authority. Yes, yes, we are in this world. Yes, we have earthly powers here, and God already recognizes it in His Word as well. But as far as the church's mission, vision, and values, we answer to a higher authority. We have been commissioned on a mission, and that mission is to go and to learn how to share your faith with others to get people saved. We have been given a vision, and we have to vision that this church is going to continually grow through the baptistry tank. Okay, I know a lot of churches, and I, hey, praise God, if people come in from other churches, I'm, well, I'd be crazy to turn them away, but that's not the purpose of this church. That's not the vision. The vision is new people. See that in baptism? It's new people. New people. Yeah, we have to grow with our existing people, and yeah, people will move into the community, and we have to, I mean, boy, can we use them. Get them in. But the vision must be that we get new people saved in the tank and joining us. That's the vision. Some churches, all they do is they try to sponge off other churches. They're always amalgamating, always trying to work backroom deals, trying to get your nonsense. We have a bigger, bigger, bigger thing to see, but we have to see it. New people. And then the values, Tad. We need to be a teaching church, we need to be an alert church, and we need to be a church of doctrine. This is where the truth is. Baby, there ain't no truth anywhere else than the local church of Jesus Christ. There ain't no value for your life. There's no purpose for your life unless you get involved and plugged into God's plan, which is in the local church. I don't know how else to say it. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible, and you deal with it your way. Shall we pray? 